in 2021 step into a more glorious covenant a more glorious life in the spirit and a more glorious ministry of the spirit god has given us a more glorious covenant with great covenantal provisions and blessings we must step into these and walk as covenant people all right as you remain standing so what we do i want just want to announce the word of the lord and then let you sit down what we do every towards the end of every year is we just ask the lord god what are you saying for the year ahead what are you saying for 2021 and and uh, i just feel that this word is not just for this year but for the beginning of a decade and it's not just you know okay i am stepping in one year is over change the date add one <laughs> go in but i believe that god is moving us and the church um uh into this and so this is like the first part of what what god is doing and i'll expand on it but i just want to give us the word of the lord and uh, then uh, you know then we will sit down and we will look at it in depth but just to make it a little dramatic all of you turn to your right <laughs> keep some space uh between you the other person All right. Take one step. Put your right leg in forward and say this with me. Step into All right, let's say. Step into the more glorious. Okay, say that again. Step into the more glorious. One more time. Step into the more glorious. So that's the word of the Lord for 2021. I believe God is telling us is inviting us as a church step into the more glorious. If you've thought you've experienced glory, God is saying there is the more step into that. Step into the more glorious so in 2021 step into a more glorious covenant a more glorious life in the spirit and a more glorious ministry of the spirit amen so let's say this together in 2021 i will step into a more glorious covenant a more glorious life in the spirit and a more glorious ministry of the spirit amen god bless you sit down we'll explain what that means <laughs> amen 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 you know god has given us a more glorious covenant Uh, with great covenant provisions and blessings and he's saying i want you to step into that i want you to walk in this more glorious covenant that i've given you and uh, we have a more glorious life in the spirit and god is saying i want you to live that life a more glorious life in the spirit and we'll explain each of these things and god is saying i have a more glorious ministry of the spirit for each of us and god is saying i want you to step in to that so let's turn in our bibles please to second corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 12 this is the passage from which we receive the word of the lord for 2021 second corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 through 12 second corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 12 not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves but our sufficiency is from god who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life 
But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what, what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. So, the Apostle Paul is telling us something about what God has prepared for us as New Testament believers. He says, this is what God has for us. As New Covenant, New Testament believers. He's contrasting this with the Old Covenant. With what was under the law, under Moses. And he says, you know, under Moses things were glorious. But what we have is more glorious. What we have is more glorious than what the Old Covenant people had. Those under the law. And he mentions three important things here for us. And verse 6 he says, he, he says, talks about a more glorious covenant. We are ministers of the new covenant. New covenant. So the covenant that we have is a more glorious covenant. So a more glorious covenant. Then he says, this is of the spirit. In that same verse, in verse 6. That was of the letter. This is of the spirit. That covenant was all about, do this, don't do this, don't do this. But this covenant is about the life of the spirit. So we have a more glorious life of the, in the spirit. And then, he talks about verse 8. The ministry of the spirit. There it was the ministry of the law. It was a ministry of death. Because people just failed. and it, it brought condemnation and death. But this is the ministry of the spirit. It brings life. It brings uh, righteousness. And so on. It's more glorious. So. What God is saying to you and me. I want you to step into this. I've prepared it for you. I've given you a more glorious covenant. I've given you a more glorious life in the spirit. I've given you a more glorious ministry of the spirit. Now step into it. Amen. Don't let it just be something in the Bible. Oh yeah, it's there. Second Corinthians chapter 3. <laughs> Don't let it be something that you know, you have sermons about. It's good, of course, if you need to learn about it. Don't let anybody rob you of it. Tell you, oh, it's not for you. No, it's for us. But now, step into that. A more glorious covenant. A more glorious life in the Spirit. And a more glorious ministry of the Spirit. And it is for all of us as believers. All of us. So, if what you have experienced has been glorious, get ready for the more glorious. God says, get into it. I want to explain these three things. Let's just say it again so that we remember it. A more glorious covenant. A more glorious life in the spirit. A more glorious ministry of the spirit. That's what God has prepared for all of us. He says, step in. Step in to that. Now, what is this word glory? Glory. 
You know, the, the, the Greek word glory, doxa, glory, especially when it's used in the context of God, both uh, the, the Old Testament glory, the word glory, and the New Testament, the word glory, especially when it's used in the context of God, what it really is telling us is it is an expression, a visible display of who God is and what he does. So what is glory? It is something tangible. It's something you can see. It's a display of who God is and what he does. That's the glory of God. Are you understanding? Right? You need to understand. What is glory? It's the display of who God is, of the nature and the works of God, the greatness of God. Of who God is, what he does. That is glory. And God is saying, I've given you a covenant so that through that covenant, his glory will be revealed through us. A more glorious covenant. More of who God is, what he does, has been made available to us through the covenant. More glorious. A more glorious life in the spirit. That means more of God is going to be revealed in us and through us. As we live this life in the spirit. A more glorious ministry of the Spirit. That means more of God is displayed through us as we minister by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about these, these three things. First of all, a more glorious covenant. So God has given us a more glorious covenant. You are a person who is in covenant with God. We, we, we did an in-depth study on the blood covenant at the beginning of 2020. So we said covenant is, is God establishing a relationship with you. A covenant is for relationship. So you and I are in covenant with God. A covenant relationship with God. An unbreakable relationship. So I'm, in, I'm in relationship with you. Covenant. And the covenant brings provisions. There are covenant provisions and covenant blessings. So you are in covenant relationship with God. And God has made Provisions for you, blessings for you. Basically, all that God is, He's made Him available to you through the covenant. And the Bible is telling us very clearly that the new covenant is a more glorious covenant than the old. It's a more glorious covenant. That means you and I receive and walk in these, this covenant with God in everyday life. Everyday life. In your workplace, you are in covenant with God. In your home, in your family, everything you see. I have a more glorious covenant with God. And I'm going to live out of that. I'm going to step into my covenant provisions and blessings in every area of my life. Are you with me? Look at every aspect of your life from your covenant relationship with God. And step in to your, the provisions and the blessings that God has made available to you through this more glorious covenant. You see, under the old covenant, he told his people, and this is Deuteronomy 28, he said, you will be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed in all the work of your hands. I'll make you the head and, and you will be above only. And your, your basket, your store will be blessed. Your children will be, will be blessed. Your household will be blessed. The reason David could slay Goliath was because he believed in his covenant with God. The reason uh, uh, Caleb could go in and say, I will take this mountain is because he believed in his covenant with God. They were covenant people. They knew what it meant to be in covenant with God. These, these great men in the Old Testament, men ever been in the Old Testament, whether you read about Esther or Ruth or, or you read about uh, Daniel or Joseph, uh, these people in the Old Testament, why did they do what they do? Because they believed in their covenant with God. They knew. They had a covenant. Amen. Now you and I must understand that you and I have a covenant with Almighty God. And then we step in to that glow, more glorious covenant. Say, God, this is it. I am stepping into this more glorious covenant. That means more of who God is and what he does is going to be made visible through my life. Because I am a covenant son or a covenant daughter with Almighty God. 
So I'm expecting more of God, who God is and what he does. So you are in covenant with God. And in every situation, you're saying, God, I want more of who you are, what you do to be displayed in and through my life because I'm in a more glorious covenant. And it is true. God said, my covenant, I will not break. I will not alter what has gone out of my lips. God's word is God's covenant with you. He said, you take a hold of it. You step in to the provisions and the blessings of that covenant. Amen? In the new covenant, you are a son and a daughter of God. You are an heir of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are the righteousness of God. You personally have access to the very throne of God. You can go boldly to the, to the throne of grace and find grace and help in, time, in your time of need. You don't need a, another high priest to do it for you. You can do it. This is your covenant right. This is your covenant blessing. Amen. This is a better covenant. And God says, I want you to step into that. Step into the, the glorious provisions and blessings are made for you. In your family, in your children, for your workplace. Every area. Say, God, I am a covenant person. And I want to see more of who you are and what you do coming through my life. Because I'm in covenant with you. A more glorious covenant. Secondly, it's a more glorious life in the spirit. A life that can manifest Jesus. You see, under the old covenant, God told them what was right and wrong. But they had no power to keep it. So Paul, this great Jewish scholar, Paul the apostle, was a Pharisee. I mean, he studied under Gamaliel. But he initially began his life under the old covenant. So he studied everything. And then he describes in Romans 7 the struggle he had under the old covenant. He said, I know what is right. But I don't have the power to do it. I desire to do the right thing. But my flesh is weak. No power. So that was life under the old covenant. Under the law. But God is saying. Look. Under the new covenant. It's a life. It's a more glorious life in the spirit. Because God is not only telling you and me what's right and wrong. He's saying I will empower you by the Holy Spirit. To do that. The Holy Spirit. Is at work in you. Changing you and me. Into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So what a glorious life in the spirit. So that you and I. Are not struggling with our own strength. But we are empowered. By the Holy Spirit. So that's so why Paul writes. He says, I want you to live in the Spirit. I, I want you to walk in the Spirit. I want you to be led by the Spirit. That means everything about you. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And what will happen with such a life? It manifests Jesus. Amen. Something that could not happen under the old covenant. It was glorious. It was wonderful. But they had no power to live it out. And here we have a more glorious covenant, a more glorious life in the spirit. I want you to know that because there is a more glorious life in the spirit, you can live as an overcomer. You are an overcomer. And by the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you can live that life, that overcoming life. So that you and I fully manifest Jesus. People are able to see Jesus in our lives. And I was so encouraged for so, much, so many of those testimonies that came in where it, they shared about how God is, is changing them, transforming their lives. But that's what happens by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are people who live life empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so God is saying, I want you to step in to this more glorious life in the Spirit. You can be like Jesus. You can be like Jesus. How? Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of Christ. He's the one who bears fruit of love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, temperance, faith. He's the one who bears that in our lives. So we need to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. And Jesus will be made manifest in our lives. 
It's more glorious. Amen? And then he says, it's a more glorious ministry of the Spirit. That means the ministry that we do. And, and remember this, every believer is a minister. So put your hand up and say this with me. I am a minister. If your neighbor hasn't put their hand up, make sure they put Everybody, put your hand up. I am a minister of Jesus Christ. Okay? In the New Testament, every person, every believer is a minister. You're serving Jesus. Whatever way, you know, you might be uh, working somewhere professionally, but you are a minister of Jesus Christ. Every one of us. And he says, as ministers, we have a more glorious ministry. That means through the ministry we are doing, we are going to display much more of the glory of God, of who he is and what he does, than what happened under the Old Testament. That's what 2 Corinthians 3 is saying. And we should expect that. How it happens, don't worry. It doesn't have to happen the same way. You know, okay, Elijah called fire from heaven. I want fire from heaven. I want fire to follow my boss especially. No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> That's not the point. You know. How God is going to display more of himself through your life. He will work. Each one of us have got different uh, ministries, different ways in which we serve God. But the point is that through each one of us, more of who God is and what he does can be put on display. That's what he's saying. You have a more glorious ministry of the Spirit. And in the light of that, so this more glorious ministry, uh, in 2 Corinthians 3, in the passage we read, it's a ministry that brings life. It brings righteousness. It transforms the heart. It brings life. The old brought death. It brings righteousness. And it changes the heart. In the old, they couldn't do that. Can you imagine? Elijah would have preached. Elisha would have preached. But their preaching did not result in life, righteousness, and the transformation of hearts. I mean, they saw wonderful things. But today you preach by the Holy Spirit and you can expect life, the life of God to be administered to people. You can expect their hearts to be changed. You can expect them to receive the righteousness of God on their lives. Things will happen in them. You can expect more of God's glory to be revealed through you. Are you with me? And God is saying, I want you to step into that. Step in so that more of my glory can be revealed through your ministry through what you do. And in the light of this, Paul says there, and I'm just summarizing verse 5, 6, and 12. He says, our sufficiency comes from God. So when you are going out to minister, serve God, remember, in, under this more glorious ministry of the Spirit, your sufficiency, your, you, you know, your matching up to the need is from God, not from yourself. So he says, our sufficiency comes from God. Second, he says in verse 7, he says, God has, sorry, verse 6, God has made us able ministers. That means I'm able to do what I've, I'm called to do. I'm sufficient, I'm able. And then he says in, in, in verse 12, he says, we have, because of this, we have boldness of speech. I can be bold about it. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to be ashamed. You can be bold about what you believe in Jesus Christ. Because you have a more glorious ministry of the Spirit. Some of the testimonies came in. Uh, people sharing about how they were you know, uh, talking about Jesus in the workplace. So that was wonderful to hear. You can be bold about your ministry. Because you have a more glorious ministry of the Spirit. Because you have a more glorious ministry, you are sufficient, you are able, and you are bold. So say this with me. I'm sufficient. I'm able, I'm bold. Let's say it again. I'm sufficient, I'm able, I'm bold. You know, as a minister of Jesus, because this is a more glorious ministry of the Spirit happening through you and me to reveal who God is and what He does. Amen? So, a few thoughts now on this here. Uh, let's turn our Bibles, please. Romans chapter 9, verses 23. 
and 24. Romans 9, 23 and 24. I want us to just see this and then a few instructions on what we need to do. Romans 9, 23 to 24. In, uh, in Romans 9, 10, 11, the Apostle Paul is, is, is uh, helping us understand God's work with Israel as a nation and the church. Helping us understand that. So, God has not replaced Israel with the church. He's not done it. It's not, that's not it. So, that's called replacement theology. And that's not right. right. So, God is at work in both the nation of Israel and in the church. Both happening in parallel. So, Paul is explaining that to us in Romans 9, 10, 11. And if we pick up these two verses, because I, I, it just kind of summarizes what God is doing. Look at verses 23 and 24. And that, Romans 9, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory. Even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So God is calling not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. He's calling both the Jewish and those who are non-Jewish. He's calling us all. But notice how in verse 23 how Paul refers to us and what is the objective of what God is doing. Notice this. He says, he first refers to us as vessels of mercy. So say this with me. I'm a vessel of mercy. Say it again. I'm a vessel of mercy. You know, very interesting. He says, look, we whom God has called, we are vessels of mercy. I mean, God has put his mercy on us. His mercy. And we can all say, God, if it was not for your mercy, I don't know what happened to me. We are vessels of mercy. He put his mercy on us. One translation says we are objects of mercy. Or people who have received his mercy. Vessels of mercy. God has been merciful. Vessels of mercy. That word vessel in the New Testament, very interesting. That vessel, the word vessel literally means an instrument, an equipment, an implement, something that is to be used. So when you think of a vessel, we think of keep pouring it in, Lord, keep pouring it in, I'll collect it. But really, that's not the end objective. The end objective is not just God pours mercy into you and you collect it. You are an implement. You are an instrument. An instrument is something that was, is intended to be used for a purpose. So the reason God put his mercy on you and the reason you are a vessel of mercy is so that you can be an instrument. Amen? Instrument. God said, look, I'm putting my mercy on you, but you're an instrument of my mercy. I got to do something. I want to do something. Through you, in you, through you. And what does he want to do? He explains in verse 23. In order to show his glory. Right? In order to display his glory. So let's say this together. We are vessels of mercy to display his glory. Let's say it again. We are vessels of mercy. To display his glory. That's who you are. Amen. Why did God make you a vessel of mercy? Why did he put his mercy on you? To show his glory. For his. Who God is. What he does. His greatness. His power. His might. His wisdom. All that God is. I want that to be shown through you. That's why I made you an instrument of my mercy. I made you a vessel of my mercy. So uh, we receive, we share, and we display the glory of God. We receive a revelation of the glory of God. We share in the glory of God, and we display the glory of God. That's why he made us vessels of mercy. Amen? And God is saying, look, let's get that going. Let's fulfill that. He said, I, the verse Romans 9.23, he planned it beforehand. 
That means it was something even before the beginning of the world. God said, this is what I'm going to do. Now it's prepared there for you and me to display his glory. And I believe that through each one of our lives, the glory of God will be displayed. Amen. You say, but how is it going to happen? Don't worry. You are a vessel of mercy. God in his mercy will get you, shape you, get you ready, get that fine tune, that instrument. Sometimes instruments before you can use them, they need to be fine tuned, all of that. God in his mercy will do it. But he's working towards something that his glory can be revealed through you and me. Right now we may be a little off tune. Right now maybe the, I don't know, these musicians know much better than me. <laughs> the chords may not be coming right, whatever. It's okay. You are an instrument of his mercy. His mercy is still working. But he's getting you ready so that his glory will be seen in your life. People will see you and they'll say, how great God is. This is the God of heaven. He's at work. You are a vessel of his mercy. To display his glory. So the invitation to all of us is to step in to take possession. We need to step in to take possession. It's like in the Old Testament. God said that land is yours. I'm giving that land. That land has been given to you. He told his people. But then Joshua 1, 3 says, I need you to go in and I need you to put your step in there. Every land that the sole of your foot treads on is yours. You've got to step in. You've got to take it. So that, that requires action, deliberate, continuous action. And you step in to reside. You don't just put your feet there. Okay, I went, I saw, I came back. No. It says, I want you to live in that place. Step in to take possession. So step into the more glorious. The more glorious covenant that God has for you. Step into it. The more glorious life in the spirit. God, I am tired of being in bondage to this sin, to that sin. Get it out. The life in the spirit. The Holy Spirit sets you free from the dominion of sin and death. Anything that is sin and anything that is working death in you. You are empowered by the spirit to be free from. Romans 8.1 the dominion of the Holy Spirit in my life sets me free, sets you free from the dominion of sin and death. Anything that is sinful, anything that works death, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life sets you free. God says, step into it. It's for you. It's yours. Take possession. Now, sadly, and sorry, I need to say this, but sometimes church people tell us, church people tell us, that's not possible. But that's when you have to choose to believe the Bible and not church people. Amen? So it's written there, Romans 8.1. The law of the spirit of life. Law means the dominion, the control. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's made me free. It's there. It's written. I have to believe that. I want to step into it. It's this more glorious life in the spirit. It's a God that's for me. I'm stepping in. I'm taking it. I'm not going to let anybody tell me it's not for me. So step in to take possession of what God has given you few more things. We'll wrap up. You know, we've got a whole year ahead, so no hurry. <laughs> Avoid sins that destroy destiny. And I'm referencing 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 to 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 through 12. I'm not going to read that passage, but if you've been following our daily devotions, we covered it. Uh, I think it was maybe two weeks back or one week back in our daily devotions. There are six, sorry, five sins listed in 1 Corinthians 10, 5 through 12. That Paul identifies and says, these are the five sins that kept the people of Israel out of their possession. God had prepared for it. 
God had prepared it for them, but they didn't get it because of these five sins. And Paul is basically saying, don't let those same five sins keep you and me from getting in to our land of promise. So I just want to mention those five sins. Be careful. We have to be careful. What were those five sins? Number one, he talks about lusting after evil things. Lusting after evil things. That means anything that holds our affections captive. Anything that takes my affections captive, holds me captive. Look, we all have legitimate bodily desires. You have to sleep, you have to eat, etc., etc. Yeah, these are legitimate. But don't let anything hold you captive. They were in the land of, they were journeying to the land of promise. God said, land flowing with milk and honey. They said, but God, the biryan, sorry, not the biryani, the, the, the onions and the garlics. God is taking them to a land flowing with milk and what they want? Onions and what we had in Egypt. Lust for other things, evil things. Hey, what, what is this? God is taking you to something much better. Uh, uh, your own land where you're free. But they want that and it just kept them away from their destiny. Second, idolatry, which is anything that takes the place of God in our lives. We all have our dreams. We all have our pursuits. We all have ambitions, all of that. But don't let any dream, any ambition, anything take the place of God. Because that's idolatry. Covetousness is idolatry, the New Testament says. That means if you want to have something so bad that that becomes more important to you than God, that's idolatry. Third, Sexual immorality. That's violating God's standards in our sexual appetites. We all are human beings. I don't think any angel is physically seated here. So our bodies have sexual desires. God designed it. So it's not bad. Don't get angry. Relax. But everything has its boundaries. When it crosses those boundaries, that's when we call it immorality. That means it's outside the boundary that God intended it for. And that sexual immorality kept them from their destiny. Number four, tempting Christ. What does it mean to tempt Christ? That means let's see if God can do it. Hmm? Let's see if God can provide mutton biryani. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting on biryani because it's the season of that biryani. But that's what essentially they said. Can God provide some meat? In the wilderness, tempting God. Let's see. So when you and I intentionally see, we have, there's a difference between believing God and testing God. God invites us to believe him, not test him. So what's the difference? Sometimes there's a very fine line. You know, in the second temptation of Jesus, the devil, the Bible says, you know, he... Uh, and, and you have to imagine this because this happened in the realm of the mind. He puts Jesus on the pinnacle of the temple and says, jump. Because it is written, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And how does Jesus respond? He says, you, can, you should not tempt the Lord your God. So, this, was a, this is a, a classic um, illustration of what it means to test or tempt God. It is true that he said he will give his angels charge over you. It is true. But that doesn't mean you should simply jump off a building and say, God, let me see. Who's coming? Gabriel? Michael? Who? If you do that, that's called tempting or testing God. And that sin kept them out of their destiny. So don't tempt God. Don't test God. It is true the word of God is there, but you do what you have to do. In normal sense, take care of your life. Do those things. Are you with me? Believe the word, but don't test God and his word. That's not what he calls us to do. He calls us to believe his word. So example. And this was an area, and I'm going back to the 1960s, 70s. And sometimes you still hear about it happening these days, but 
You see, the Bible said they will take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Now that's Mark 16, 17, 18. It's true. But that doesn't mean you should purposely, hello, everybody, see, I can drink poison and nothing will happen. That is tempting God. But by mistake, you go to some place or, you know, and, and, and they serve you food. You pray and eat and say, you believe that God, I, I, I don't know, you know what has happened before this, but they've given me food, I have to eat. Pray, eat, and you believe that you will be protected. That is believing the word. That's not putting God to the test. There's a difference. Are you with me? But in the 60s, 70s, especially in the early Pentecostal moments, they had these tents where people tried to handle snakes and do those crazy things, and some of them died. Because they were not believing God, they were testing God. There's a difference. But that sin kept the people out of their destiny. Believe God, do what you have to do. And last, the fifth one was they were murmuring and complaining. They were speaking ill of God, his work, his ways, his people. They spoke ill. Oh, where is God? Why have we, you know, why did he bring us out here? He's going to kill us. What, who is this Moses? He didn't, he didn't tell us to pack water bottles. Where will get water? All kinds of murmuring, complaining. And God had to deal with that. But avoid, the point I'm making, I'm trying to make it a little funny, but the point is, avoid these five sins. Because they are the, they, these are the things that keep us from stepping into the more glorious. Avoid these things. This may not make you happy, but part of stepping into the more glorious could mean that we may attract some persecution. 1 Peter 4.14 tells us that if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. So when, sometimes when you are living, you're walking under this more glorious covenant, walking in this more glorious life in the spirit, and walking in this more glorious ministry of the spirit, it will attract persecution. People will reproach, speak bad of you. But that's when you remember, they may speak bad of me, but Jesus Christ, the spirit of glory rests on me and Jesus is being glorified in my life. So don't worry if you're persecuted because of living this more glorious covenant life and life in the spirit and ministry of the spirit. In closing, I just want to give us a bigger picture. See, God has a twofold purpose on the earth right now that's there's many things God is doing, but two important things. He's bringing the church to be a glorious church. A church without spot or wrinkle. That means he's bringing us to a place where we, the church, church meaning all believers worldwide, all of us will be like this. We'll be a glorious church. We will reveal his glory. He's doing that. That's God. He's doing that. He's taking the church from glory to glory. So that's part of what we are journeying into. Till we become like Jesus. The full measure of the stature of Christ. Secondly, God is also filling the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God. It will be fully accomplished in the millennial kingdom. But God is preparing through the church. The knowledge of the glory of God is filling the earth. So God is doing that. He's bringing the church to a place of greater glory. And through the church, the knowledge of the glory of God, to know how great God is, is going to be displayed. So, how can I, and I'm speaking to us as a church now. As a church, we must grow in faith, power, compassion and intercession for the church to be this glorious church for this church to see the earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of God we need to be a church full of faith full of power full of compassion and intercession faith believe God's word power the power of the Holy Spirit Compassion, love, because 
Faith only works through love and intercession because that births the things God wants on the earth. We need to be, as a church, growing in this. Amen? Worship team, please come. So, 2021, step in to the more glorious, a more glorious covenant, a more glorious life in the spirit, a glor more glorious ministry of the spirit. Be intentional. Say, God, I want that in my life. We're going to partake of the Lord's table at this time. And what a beautiful way to receive the word, the message. You say, God, I receive everything we have spoken. It's been made possible for us because of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. And as we partake of the Lord's table, we are saying, I am part of this covenant that Jesus established. But I want you very prayerfully say, God, in this covenant, you said it's more glorious. There are greater provisions and blessings. There is greater empowering of the Holy Spirit that I'm, I, I, want, I need to step into. And there's a greater work of the Spirit that, that, that should be released through my life. So today, sitting here, the first day of this new year, first day of this decade, as I partake of these elements, I am saying, I want to step in to this more glorious life in the Spirit, covenant and work of the Spirit. I want it, God. I want more of it. I'm a vessel of mercy to display your glory. Let more of your glory be displayed. The covenant covers everything about your everyday life. The life in the Spirit covers everything about how you live as a believer. The ministry of the Spirit covers everything of what you do in service for the king. Everything is covered. And everything is going to be more glorious. So please prepare. Take a moment to pray. Say, God, I want to step in to the more glorious. Those of you who are at home or watching us online, say, God, I want more. I want to step into this more glorious. And as you prepare the elements, pray over them. Get ready. Make this your prayer. The more glorious covenant, the more glorious life in the Spirit, the more glorious work of the Spirit. I want to step into it. Make that your prayer. Father, we just sanctify these earthly elements, Lord, of bread and grape juice. These tell us you've brought us into a covenant with you. But today we heard it's a more glorious covenant that has made available to us a more glorious life in the Spirit. It has also made available to us a more glorious ministry of the Holy Spirit. Father, each one of us in this auditorium and those watching online, we desire to step into the more glorious. That more of who you are and what you do will be displayed through us. God, if your word says this, under the old covenant, people couldn't even look at the face of Moses because of the glory that shone. 
they couldn't handle it pray you bring us to a place each one of us where people around us they see so much of your glory they can't help but come to you lord they can't help but say they want your jesus He sanctified these earthly elements lord of bread and grape juice as we partake we say we receive the full provisions and the full blessings healing and deliverance and victory and wholeness and blessing of this more glorious covenant Lord Jesus said Take eat This is my body That's given for you Do this in remembrance of me Let's partake of the bread together please Lord Jesus said this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins the blood of Jesus Christ God's son has cleansed us the blood of Jesus Christ God's son has redeemed us and delivered us we are purchased by the blood we belong completely to the lord we overcome the adversary by the blood of the lamb let's partake of the cup together knowing what the blood of jesus has done for us let's partake together please stand to our feet please Father I just pray that even as we heard your word that each one of us will step in to the more glorious that our lives will put on display the more glorious covenant the more glorious life in the spirit and the glor- more glorious work of the spirit it'll happen through each of us more of who you are what you do will be displayed through each of us god the glory of god revealed through each of us we step into it we will walk in it in our homes and our families and our personal lives and our workplaces the glory of god will be seen we accept lord that we are vessels of mercy to display your glory we accept it god that's who we are that's who we are let your glory be displayed because you have been merciful to us let your glory be seen We thank you God. And Father, we pray that as a church we will journey in your twofold purpose, God, that we will become that glorious church without spot or wrinkle, ready for the coming of our Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And through us, oh God, may the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Help us to do our part. to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God by the power of your holy spirit may the holy spirit increase his work through us 
that our city our nation and the nations that the whole earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God amen do you agree with that amen so let's say this together i step in i step in to the more glorious the more glorious i step in i step in to the more glorious covenant the more glorious covenant the more glorious life in the spirit the more glorious life in the spirit the more glorious ministry of the spirit the glorious ministry of the spirit amen and through us let's say this together through us and through us let the earth be filled let the earth be filled with the knowledge with the knowledge of the glory of god the glory of god amen we're going to sing a song that was written maybe back in the 70s it's a very old song or maybe not as old as the last time we sang it <laughs> this is a old song it used to be sung in the days of the move of the holy spirit uh they're not exactly sure when it was written most likely in the 60s or 70s so uh but we used to enjoy singing this and let's sing it again worship team
said it would be receive God everything you want to do in us for us and through us we receive Lord we receive your word that this year each one of us God will step in and walk in that more glorious covenant that you have that we will walk in this more glorious life in the spirit live our daily lives empowered by the Holy Spirit so that Jesus is seen in our lives and God that each one of us will minister serve do whatever we call to do but the as in the more glorious work of the Spirit. That it will be the more glorious work of the Spirit released through each of us, Lord. And we know that as we do that, you will be glorified. Your glory will be revealed, Father. That we will be objects and vessels and instruments of mercy to display your glory, Father, each one of us. That people will see who God is, what God does through vessels of mercy. People will see it through each of our lives. And may it bring the knowledge of the glory of God to many people. That others may see. And let the earth be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. And as we go from here, Father. As we begin a new year, a new decade. 
may we go from glory to glory to be that glorious church for which Jesus will come back so let it be so let it be the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the sweet empowering life giving presence and work of the holy spirit continue and increase in each of us in jesus name everyone said amen 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 Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources including sermon, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org/biblecollege. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.